Hello and welcome to Ask Dr. Love. This is the podcast where you get to ask the question about acupuncture, herbal medicine, Asian medicine, food therapy, philosophy, ancient healing philosophy, ancient Egypt, Tibetan medicine, Japanese medicine, Korean medicine, anything you want to know, now's the time. If love is the answer, what is your question? Ask Dr. Love is heard daily on Spotify and Heart Radio and iTunes Radio and Radio Play and your favorite broadcast streaming device. And all you have to do is ask Google, Alexa, or Siri. Hey, Google Assistant, play Ask Dr. Love podcast. And there you have it. So you can start asking your questions right now. Your question doesn't even have to be related to today's topic. You can ask anything you want. But I have so many friends that are yoga teachers. They're sort of certified in yoga. And I keep trying to get them to do Qigong and they keep being very resistant. So I'm here to explain the difference between what is Hatha Yoga and what is Qigong. So first of all, I taught yoga for five years. So I am a certified yoga teacher. And I studied Kriya Yoga. And I studied Iyengar Yoga. But I'm here to talk about Hatha Yoga, which was written about Pantanjali in the 5th century AD. And so there are six parts to Hatha Yoga. And when we're in America and we're talking about yoga in America, we're specifically re referring to the physical exercises that you go to a yoga class for. And those are called the asanas or postural disciplines. And the purpose of the asanas is to be able to sit in meditation longer. It's not about how good I am in a particular posture or how long I can hold a posture or how good I look in a posture. It's really about discipline so that I can sit in meditation longer. Now, in between the postures, you're supposed to do pranayam, which are breathing exercises. And I'm just going to give you two very simple breathing exercises. If you're a yoga teacher or you've taken any kind of yoga class, you know about pranayam, which is inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. You do that 16 times and then you do the same thing on the other side. Now what you guys don't know is that you breathe out of both nostrils for four hours and then you breathe out of one nostril for two, back to both nostrils for four, and then the other nostril for two. So you're always alternating and you've lived 20, 30, 40 years and you have no clue that your breathing alternates. And what is the purpose of that? It is to create negative ions in your lungs. The next part of Hatha is called Pratyahara. Pratyahara. And that is the withdrawal of the senses. We're human beings. We want to taste and smell and touch and feel and hear and look. And we want to put all our energy out in the sensing. But pratyahara is to withdraw, is to close the eyes halfway, close the ears halfway, to not want to smell beautiful onions or cashews or cucumbers. And that's really hard to do because when you walk down the street and there's vendors on the street selling all kinds of delicious food or restaurants, 
your senses are always engaged. If you have a cell phone, your senses are engaged. So the issue in Hatha Yoga is to withdraw, is to put the cell phone in the car, leave the cell phone in the car, go to the park, sit in silence next to a brook or a stream or a lake or a river, and the only sound you hear is the leaves rustling in the trees. The next part is dharana, which is mental intention, focus, and will. And the actual translation is concentration. So the issue for us is, why do we need to concentrate? Can I just look it up? Can I just Google it? Why do I need to concentrate? Because if you want to be accomplished at anything you do, you have to have that mental intention, focus, and concentration. And the last aspect of Hatha Yoga is Samadhi. And Samadhi is the union of mind and body. And that's what we think yoga is. Yoga is union of mind and body. But it's the blissful consciousness where the mind and body are non-dual. That means non-separated. That means one. And if you've been counting, you know I did forget one. And that's dhyana, which is meditation. Now, what's the difference between meditation and concentration and withdrawal of the senses and breathing exercises? Isn't all that part of meditation? Well, obviously not according to the Hindu system. So the point of dhyana is to be still in meditation, to have an erect posture, to have a visualization of a mandala. So you're visualizing something, you're withdrawing from the senses, you're concentrating on your breath, and you're doing your pranayam. And then, and only then, will you reach samadhi. And that is what Hatha Yoga is supposed to be, as opposed to the Western Hatha, which is just physical exercise, a stress-reducing practice. So we've turned it into an exercise here in America instead of understanding the intention, which is to be in a blissful state of consciousness, unifying body and mind. Now, if you're a serious, hardcore Hatha Yoga practitioner, then you might want to add something like Shatkriya, which is a purification process, which is fasting. Or you might want to do mudras. And there's a whole thing on mudras that I teach, but now's not the time. So if you have any questions at all about yoga, Ashtanga yoga, Hatha yoga, Kriya yoga, Kundalini yoga, now's the time to ask your question in the comments, no matter where you are. And if you're on your phone, you can go to text at Ask Dr. Love to 810 one zero. So now, what are the linkages between Hatha and Qigong? Well, Qigong also has eight breathing exercises. Qigong also has moving meditation. Qigong also has reduction of the stimulation of the senses. And Qigong also has the three treasures, which is the elixir field of breathing, the elixir field of 
mental intention, focus, and will, and the elixir field of creating awareness or connection to union of mind and body. So samadhi is right here. So everything that is in yoga, hatha yoga, is also in the blue dragon system of medical qigong. So now I'm going to open it up for questions. If there's a question that you had yesterday or the day before you didn't get a chance to ask, now is the time to ask those questions. I saw a YouTube video about a guru from India who came to the United States and was invited to attend a yoga class. And he was shocked and horrified at what he saw as the bastardization of his spiritual teaching. So that is something that Americans are typically guilty of, is bastardizing or appropriating someone else's spiritual cultural practice. So that is up to your choice. I'm not here to judge you about what your choices are. If you were taught or trained a specific way and you really enjoy that, be my guest enjoy it. But if you want to understand what is really samadhi and dhyana and dharana and pratyahara and pranayama and asana, then please contact me or my friend Marcus Brimage, who teaches hot yoga, which is a style of yoga based upon the environment in India where they would practice in the heat which then allows your muscles to relax and expand but there as many styles of yoga as there are fingers and toes there's over 7,000 forms of Qigong but there's only three types of medical Qigong that I know. And I'm happy to teach the immortal Qigong. So, do we have any questions? Um, somebody on Instagram, I want to know how to stop uh, drinking coffee because it's uh, affecting them, making her uh, tired and not being able to focus and feeling scattered. So how do I give up my coffee routine is the question. Okay, so first of all, we substitute the coffee for something else. And there's something called tea chino, T-E-E-C-I-N-O. And it is tea that tastes like coffee. And then there are coffee substitutes. There are herbs. They don't really taste like coffee, but if you're trying to withdraw from coffee, that's your best bet. So there are coffee substitutes, and I can't think of the name of the root off the top of my head, but it'll come back to me. And then there are strong teas. So there's matcha tea. Uh, and matcha tea is from Japan, and that's very high in caffeine. And there's another tea from South America that's also very high in caffeine. So you can very slowly withdraw from both the coffee flavor and the caffeine. And my favorite way of withdrawing from coffee is mushroom coffee, which actually has the coffee flavor but the kick comes from the mushroom. And so there's four or five medicinal mushrooms that we actually put into the coffee flavor, which only has 25 milligrams of caffeine, 
which is the same amount of caffeine as a cup of tea. Starbucks coffee, on the other hand, has 375 milligrams of caffeine. So when we compare 25 milligrams to 375 milligrams, that's 12, 13, 14, that's 15 times more milligrams in coffee than in the mushroom coffee. So that is your best way of withdrawing from coffee. Uh, how do you get started with Qigong and start a daily practice as a beginner? Okay, the best way to get started is to join our morning online Qigong class. And you can easily register for that with lovechigong.com. And you go there and put all your information in and boom, you will be uh, directed to the online class, which is Monday through Friday at 7.30 a.m. But what if I don't get up at 7.30? Then what? Well, the shows are archived and they're immediately transferred to Vimeo.com. So once you register and you miss the class or you choose not to do the early morning class, you can always catch the replay on Vimeo. And once you join, that, those links will already be made for you. So Qigong is breathing, it's meditation, it's internal exercise, it's foods, it's herbs, it's self-massage, and external exercise. So there's various parts of Qigong just like there are in Hatha Yoga. So, next question. So how do you get back to the roots of Hatha Yoga and not Westernizing it? What is the strategy, information strategy, implementation strategy to getting back to the roots? Well, getting back to the root is first of all, understanding that the crux, the essence is not the asana. The essence is sitting in meditation. So that's the dhyana. That's what you want to do. And when you're in dhyana, you want to have the withdrawal of the senses. And then you want to do breathing exercises while you're sitting in meditation. The asana is just an extra thing that allows you to sit in dhyana longer. Now, I recommend 20 minutes twice a day. You can do 30 minutes twice a day. You can do 40 minutes twice a day. You can do an hour twice a day. Now, we live in the West. We can't do that interlocking with the feet because we never learned how to do that, how to do that as children. So. The trick is to sit on the edge of the chair where your knees are below the hips and your ankles are crossed. I don't know if you can see that posture, so you just have to work with me. You're sitting on the edge of the chair, the knees are below the hips, the ankles are crossed. Now you have to arch your back. So when I say arch your back, I don't, I don't mean lean back, I mean your back has to be straight, you tuck your chin in and then you elevate your head 30 degrees. Your hands are in your lap or your hands are palm up on your knees. That is the dhyana posture or the meditation posture. And then you do the withdrawal of the senses and then you do the breathing exercises. And that's how you get back to the original root. Now, if you can't hold that posture, if you can't sit for that long, that's when you have to do the asanas, and that's when you have to do the dharana, which is the mental intention, focus, and will. Okay, so the postures and then the concentrations. And then, hopefully, you'll be able to reach samadhi. So I hope that answers your question.
keep saying we got to have a soundtrack and every day I forget to set up a soundtrack so there's no dead air space while we're waiting for the questions to come through. Why do the two sides of my neck feel congested and the veins feel tough? Why does the back of my neck always feel tender? I had a neck muscle strain a year ago. Okay, the reason that is is because of your posture, sitting, standing, and sleeping. It's more than likely your neck is strained or, or your neck is not healing from the strain because of your sleeping posture. So what I'm going to suggest is you use your right hand to cross over to the left side of your neck. And with your thumb, you're going to hook that muscle, which is called the sternocleidomastoid muscle, or the SCM for short, and you're going to pluck all the different strands of the muscle fibers in your neck. Then you're going to use your left hand to cross over to the opposite side of the neck. And then you're going to pluck the SCM. And you're going to go back and forth 16 times. That's going to help break up the stagnation and separate the various strands of muscle fiber in your neck. Then you're going to cup your hand and then you're going <laughs> to drum the back of your neck and you're going to do that eight times, wait two seconds, do it eight more times and you're going to do a sequence of three times eight and then you're going to switch hands and you're going to do this. that all the way down to my toes <laughs> so that's the hookup so you're gonna cup the hand bang it eight times wait two seconds bang it eight times wait two seconds bang it, bang it eight times and then switch hands and do it with the opposite hand and that's what you're gonna do on the back of the neck and then you're gonna pluck the front of the neck 16 times alternating left and right hands. So let us know how you make out. After you do that for four or five days, come back and text us. Let us know how that feels. If there's a... Uh, Can you share some of your uh, testimonies from the Qigong class? Testimonies. You want me to share some, some of, of mine? Oh, some of the... Oh, wow. Okay. Without names. Without names. Why not? Why not names? Okay. So, um, we had a, a guy this morning who uh, spends a lot of time on his phone. And it was his first time doing Chi Cups. And he was amazed at how his time-space distortion was reorganized by doing the teacups. Then last week we had another girl, it was her uh, second or third time doing teacups and she had a back pain in the center of her back and she said she was amazed that the back pain went away. Then uh, the week before that we had a, another new student who did it one time and she said she never slept as good as she did the night of the Qigong class. And she did Qigong first thing in the morning and she said she normally goes to bed and she's tense and nervous and that night she slept like a baby. And that woman sent three new patients, uh, three new students just because of her one time experience. Then uh, we had another patient, another student who had knee pain and we taught her the sw uh, limp swing. So 88 times she had to go up on her toes, rock back on her heels. We call that the calf rock. And she said one time knee pain went away. One class. So it's pretty amazing how the, uh, the newbies, the newcomers are able to distinguish uh, benefits in just one class. 
So if your pain goes away and you sleep better and you have more energy and you have more mental focus, that's pretty darn important. And I think that's something that you might want for yourself. So you can always go to lovechigong.com and register for the morning class. So Ian Jasui says, peace, how can one use Qigong to heal skin issues like eczema? How can one use Qigong to heal skin issues like eczema? So eczema is caused by inflammation and the heat in the body is trying to break out. So doing Qigong cools the heat. So meditation and breathing and doing the chi cup exercise first. And that's how you get rid of the inflammation. Now you have four layers of skin and the heat comes from the inside and then the heat tries to break out of the skin. And that's what you call eczema. And so if we can cool the heat, then the heat doesn't have to break out. So Qigong alone is probably not enough. You may need to include more water. You may need to include breathing exercises at ba bedtime. You may want to include coconut oil in your diet or even on your skin. But Qigong will definitely be the foundation of reducing inflammation. So the chi is expressed from the center of the palm, which is called Lao Gong, and that chi comes from the pericardial meridian, which is what we call the envelope of the heart. And these are actual membranes that carry the chi and the blood down to the center of the palms. And since time immemorial, we've seen the hand used as spiritual consciousness. Sometimes you see an eye in the center of the palm. Sometimes you see a spiral in the center of the palm. Sometimes you see a square as a spiral in the center of the palm. And all those represent life force energy that's being expressed. So as you do Qigong exercises, you literally pull the chi up into the heart and then send it from the heart down the arms and into the palms and then that can be transferred as healing to yourself as putting energy in rubbing someone else's sore shoulder or someone else's sore knee which is exactly how I got into healing and qigong practices in the first place. So I would like to take these final moments and help you focus on what you have to do differently. As the quarantine winds down and comes to a close, you're going to get conflicting information. You're going to get information that challenges your assumptions. You're going to go into what we call cognitive dissonance because you're going to be presented with facts that contradict your belief system. And when that happens, your brain is literally going to shut off receiving new information because you are so sure of your beliefs that when you are faced with facts, your brain just shuts down like, I can't accept that. I don't want to hear what you have to say. And that's what we call cognitive dissonance. So our belief structures are stronger than facts. Our belief structures are stronger than information that's logically presented. And so we would rather believe in a lie than to discover the truth. And that's something that each and every one of you 
has got to go through a self-examination process. I am not here to tell you what to believe. I'm only here to tell you to challenge what you believe. Rediscover the facts and look at everything. Do not base your life on assumptions. Your parents could have taught you improperly. Your religion could have taught you improperly. Your government, your school system could have taught you improperly. I'm here to challenge you to think for yourself. I'm here to help you develop critical thinking skills. Always go back to the origin. Always go back to the source. Find out what the intention was. Our founding fathers had a specific intention and whoever you elected is abrogating those intentions. So you have to create your intention of how you want to be governed. The World Health Organization has an agenda that is supported by Big Pharma. I'm not saying Big Pharma is right or wrong. I'm only saying is challenge the narrative. Don't believe everything that you're spoon fed. Find out what works for you and then act on that. Again, I'm not here to tell you what to believe. I'm here to teach you how to think, how to ask the critical questions, and to come to a conclusion that serves you. So, this is what Qigong does. This is what yoga does. These are spiritual practices that allow you to come to your own conclusions that serve your spiritual connection and your spiritual process and your physical well-being. Anything that does not serve you spiritually and physically should be discarded without anger, without rancor, without distress, without undue negative energy. Just let it go and go in another direction. Instead of attacking a system, build a parallel system with people that trust you and that you trust. If you trust, you experience love. And if you love, you experience trust. So that has got to be your starting point. Who do I love? What do I love? And whatever you love is what you feed, is what you nourish. If you love leather pants, you buy leather pants. You spend money on it. If you love flowers, you don't pick them. You buy potted plants and you nourish them. So whatever you love is what you give energy to. Love is an action, not a feeling. So if you love yourself, you should be seeking to concentrate on withdrawing from the senses. You should be seeking to concentrate on breathing, to oxygenate the blood and supersaturate it with nutrients and electromagnetically charge your blood with rotational joint exercises from Qigong. This is what you need to be doing if you really love yourself. If you had a niece or a nephew stay with you for the weekend, you wouldn't let them stay up all hours of the night. You'd make them go to bed at a certain time. You would feed them healthy food at a specific time. You wouldn't let them eat cookies and pizza all day or soda. And if you wouldn't do that for your niece or your nephew, then why would you allow your human animal to hijack your uncommon sense and send you down the path of auto intoxication. Why would you do that to yourself? 
And this is why we have these spiritual practices of immortal Qigong and yoga. So, any last questions? No more questions. Well, then my preaching is done. And if you're a regular listener, we've got some new and exciting changes coming up. I want to talk to you about liberation. What do you need to be liberated from? The prison of your mind, the prison of your beliefs, the prison of your actions. So we're going to talk about liberation for the rest of this week. And if you've been a regular, you know we've been doing this every day for six weeks. And we're going to change it up. We're going to go to a one-hour format starting next Monday. Next Friday. I'm sorry. A one-hour format a week from Friday. Our podcast on Tuesdays and Thursdays is going to be about ancient Egyptian healing practices. And on Wednesday, our 11 o'clock podcast is going to be about healthy eating and food preparation and raw food and juicing. So our format's going to change. Tuesday, ancient Egyptian. Wednesday, food therapy. Thursday, Ancient Egyptian, and then Friday is going to be a one-hour podcast with a guest. So we've got a lot of changes coming up for you. We've listened to the questions that you asked, and we are here to serve you by providing the information that's going to change your life and enhance your life. I'm Dr. George Xavier Love for the Blue Dragon Qigong Academy. And I'm here to remind you that your health is in your hands. Prevention is the only cure. And if you want to be well, you've got to qigong well. Thank you.